So this is our semi-arid garden. I'm looking at some cassava and a large tamarind tree. So tamarind would be a, a common tree in very dry areas. Produces a sweet and tangy uh, fruit. It's a legume. And cassava is also a very drought tolerant crop. It has a starchy, tuberous root that uh, you have to process so it doesn't have cyanide, but it's a very important staple crop in many parts of the tropics. That's where we get tapioca, is another name for cassava. And the trees that you see in front of me, the kind of spiny white branches, is the Fiderbia or Aporing Acacia. And there's a very large one there. It's a unique tree because it does something called uh, reverse leaf phenology. So it, it actually grows leaves during the dry season and then drops its leaves during the rainy season, which is opposite of most trees. Now, in Florida, it doesn't exhibit this, this pattern perfectly. But in regions in Africa where you have very pronounced wet and dry seasons, then you see that pattern pretty distinctly. And what it allows farmers to do is they, they traditionally will leave these trees in their fields and they can cultivate sun-loving annual staple grain crops like millet and sorghum or maize right around these large trees because the trees are leafless during the rainy season when they would be growing their millet or sorghum. And so the trees don't compete with the crops, they actually benefit the crop by dropping a lot of leaf litter that decomposes and uh, improves the soil, uh, adds nitrogen to the soil. It is a nitrogen fixing legume and so when the, uh, the trees fix nitrogen in association with uh, rhizobia, uh, that nitrogen then becomes available uh, as roots slough off, as leaf litter falls that nitrogen benefits adjacent crops. But then the trees will leaf out during the dry season and they provide shade for the soil which helps to uh, reduce the, the damage and uh, stress on the soil, reduce temperature of the soil uh, during that, that dry season. It also provides shelter for cattle and fodder for cattle. So. Uh, cattle, animals will benefit from the Fiderbia tree and they also will leave their fertility around those, those trees. Some of these trees are being coppiced, so we're cutting them low to the ground and then training up several shoots. And this is a system called Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration. And so the tree right in front of me, you can see it has several large poles, shoots coming up, and those have been selected from you know, maybe 10 or 12 shoots emerged from the stump, but we just selected three or four and trained those up, and those can be harvested for building material or even charcoal making, handicrafts, whatever the farmer needs. It's a valuable resource that they can draw from, and the tree uh, stays within the agricultural landscape. And so this system is really helping to bring value back to trees within fields, especially with a tree like the Fiderbia because it doesn't compete with the adjacent crops. Moving over here, you can see that we do have some millet. This was recently planted number of uh, maybe six weeks or so ago and so the millet is coming up and uh, it's growing pretty much right up to this Fiderbia. Now this tree is generating quite a bit of shade and that's again because in Florida we don't see that really distinct pattern uh, with the Fiderbia 
but a lot of the leaf growth has happened fairly recently. And for much of the summer, the trees didn't have as much uh, foliage. So Fiderbia albida, really significant tree in semi-arid arid regions of Africa, can be grown close association with field crops and also is conducive to this FMNR, farmer-managed natural regeneration technique.